Hey guys, hope you're doing well. Um, I'm going to start talking about uh, hypothesis testing for variances now. I'm going to have to change a few things. Nothing too major, but I'm going to be making a few changes. Okay, so so far what we've looked at is what population means. One and two samples. And we've looked at population proportions, one and two samples. Did some matching stuff. Um, and in every case, what we've dealt with is we've dealt with population parameters, right? That's what we care about usually. Population parameters. Actually, I should zoom in probably. This is kind of messy. I apologize. Still working on my handwriting. Okay, so we, we looked at mu. Those are the means. We looked at p. That's a population proportion. Mu and p. Now we're going to look at uh, population parameters where we're trying to make inference about sigma. In particular, we're going to be doing hypothesis testing. Um, so we want to know something about sigma. I'm sorry, I'll try to stop doing that. It's a nervous tick I have. We want to know something about sigma or sigma squared. Once we know something about one, we can say something about the other. <laughs> so what we're going to do is what we've done before. We're going to make an assumption, and we're going to test to see if it's a reasonable assumption. So that's what our hypotheses are. Make an assumption. These are our hypotheses. We test to see what the, whether that's reasonable. Now, what we need to know, what we used for the what we've done so far, uh, was sampling theory. Remember, we said that if you took a sample, uh, if you took a simple random sample like this, take a sample, then you're, what that is doing, if you find the sample mean, that's that's going to come from a normal distribution. And that's what we did for sample means, and we used that to get two samples and that kind of stuff. Well, as it turns out, we know something about, uh, about variances. What we know is that if we take a sample from a normal population, this is important, it has to be normally distributed population, which is a little different, then uh, sigma squared is, is related to the sample mean in some particular, or sample variance in some particular way. So we have normally distributed population of x's. And if that's true, then what we know is this statistic, which we call chi squared, that's a 2, which is equal to n minus 1 times s squared. That's the sample variance over sigma squared. This is distributed chi squared, which is a special type of distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Okay, so this sample statistic, this test statistic, which is you take the standard or you take the variance of the sample, the sample variance, multiply it by one, uh, one less than the sample size divided by the, the population variance, then you'll get a value, which is chi squared distributed with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. That's great. The reason this is great is that we have tables, we have Excel functions that you can use for that distribution. You can use it to test our assumption. It's a test statistic. So what do you need to know about the chi-squared distribution? Well, let me show you what I have on it. It's a, it looks like this. What? Okay, I'm looking at my notes now, which are available online. I just want to show them to you because I graphed the curves in Excel already, and it's just easier to show you them directly, I think. So the chi-squared distribution. Well, it's squared, so it only takes positive values. Uh, we can look at the formula, and you can see that, right? You're always going to have uh, positive n minus 1. S squared is always going to be positive, and sigma squared is always going to be positive because they're both squared. So this should be always positive, uh, which means that when you draw it, it starts at 0 here, and it goes up. Uh, it's asymmetrical. It's not symmetrical, so it's going to be lumpy. We can't do what we did before with cutting it in half and knowing that there's half on one side and half on the other. Um, it's indexed by degrees of freedom, so much like the t-distribution, it's a, it's a class of distributions. Uh, and you just need to know the degrees of freedom to know which curve you're looking at. And it looks like this, right? So it's got it's one hump. Um, and it starts with the fewer degrees of freedom kind of bunch up against the zero. And then as you get more degrees of freedom, it stretches out. Okay, so we we read the table the same way we did with the t-table, but now we don't have a symmetric curve. 
um, so they have to give us twice as much information. That's an F table. You guys want to see a chi squared table? So chi squared table I have here. Okay, so unlike a T table, uh, nuts. this is asymmetric. So they give us twice as much information, and I'll show you how to read this in a sec. First, let's show you how I know you know what you're talking about. If you want to draw a chi-squared distribution, let's say we want to draw chi-squared with 6 degrees of freedom. The way to show me that you know it's only positive is you draw a line like this and a line like this and you put a 0 here. So you know, I know that you know that it starts at 0. Uh, and then just something like this. It's one hump and you can write df equals 6 and chi-squared right here. Okay, That's a chi-squared distribution with 6 degrees of freedom as drawn for the purposes of being able to play with it. Now we can make inference about all sorts of areas underneath here just like we could before except we don't have that much information because there are lots of these curves right we could draw another one over here that has maybe df equals 12 it looks like normal but it's not actually normal it's going to be asymmetrical but you get the idea there's a lot of different things we can know about it so what does our table tell us well we can, it tells us a few things Let's take a look and see. Uh, let's look at just the one that has six. So let me undo what I just did. There we go. So now I just have a six curve. Um, and we'll look at our table here to see what we can say about one with six degrees of freedom. Okay, now you can see we have a row here for six degrees of freedom. That's a lot of information. Twice as much as we had about the T table because you can't. you can only use it once. You can't use symmetry. So it needs to be wider. What this tells us is the area in the upper tail for a bunch of different values of, of chi squared under the curve, right? What this says is if we go right here to 0 0.676, um, then that's right here, 0 0.676. And if you go up to the top of that table, you can see that there's 0 0.995 in the upper tail. So what that says is that we have 0 0.995 in the upper tail. Oh, I forgot to mention, the total area under here is still 1 because it's a probability, which means that this is going to be 1 minus 0 0.995, which is 0 0.005. That's why they give that to us, actually. Okay, so we have 0 0.005 over here, and 0 0.995 is this big purple lump all the way out here. And if we keep going over, it keeps telling us more and more stuff. Uh, so we have 0.872, well 0 0.872 has 99% to the right, so this green area has an area of 0 0.99, that means the area to the left over here is going to be 0 0.01. Now you can go a ways over here, let's say we'll go to 10.645 here. Well that says that if we go this far over to 10.645, the area over here, the area in the upper tail is 0 0.10, and the area over here is 0 0.90. That's all the way over here. So we have lots of information. We can use this to bound our p-values. For example, let's say we ran a test, and we got a test statistic, a chi-squared equal to uh, 12.5 and we had 6 degrees of freedom. We'll stick with that for now. Well, we draw this. We have 0 chi squared. Draw a little lump. df equals 6. Now I've turned my problem into a picture almost. Now I just need to add that my chi squared value is 12.5. Now let's say I'm doing a one-sided a right tail test and I want to know what this area is over here. Okay, well, if I look over here, I can see, uh, just like we did with a t-table, it's gonna the test statistic falls right in between here, it's, which means that the area is going to be between these two values up here, because we have 10.645 over here, and 12.5 something close, 12.592 over here. It's impossible to read, but you can see it on this table here, 12.592. The area to the right of 12.592 is 05. The area to the right of 10.645 is 0 0.10, which means that my area is going to be greater than 0 0.05 and less than 0 0.10. And this right here, this is my p-value, assuming that I got that far, that that was the test statistic that I got, that was the degrees of freedom that I got. I can find this area. It's going to be between those two. 
and I use that chi-square table just like I did my t-table before. So as you can see, we can do some stuff with a chi-square table that we've done before. Uh, so you have a few things now. What do you have? We have uh, our test statistic. I can turn this into a test statistic like this. We don't know the actual population variance, so we just put a zero here, and that's our population variance. We make an assumption about one, and then we draw a sample of size n, and we find s squared, and then that gives us our population, or that gives us our test statistic by using this formula. We can find our degrees of freedom over here, and then we can do inference. The problem is, well, how do we make assumptions about the, the null, the, uh, uh, the standard deviation or the variance under the null? Well, this is how we do it. It's going to look like one of three things. Let me pull up my notes here so that I make sure that you see them the way I want them. Okay, well, we have a lower tail test, which is to say that we think we're looking to test to see if we can prove that the variance is small. Uh, and this is that our null is that the variance is actually big. And under the alternative, the variance is small. Uh, sorry, not that, sigma squared, sigma squared zero. We have a two-tailed test where we're stating that the variance is some specific value against the alternative that the variance is certainly not that. And then we have a, a right-tailed test where we're testing, we're going to assume that the variance is small and we're testing to see if it's actually bigger than some value. And those are the three kinds of tests that we run. Uh, the rest of inference is more or less the same, just like what we've done before. So we state our hypotheses. We choose a level of significance. Uh, we choose our test statistic, which since now we're dealing with one variance, one sample, one population, one variance, it's going to, we're going to use the chi-squared test statistic. We have n minus 1 s squared over sigma squared, which has a chi-squared distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Uh, and then step four, we calculate that. So we need to find n, s squared, and sigma squared. You got to be careful about those squareds. You don't want to make mistakes there. But those are the only things that we need. And then step five, we use our chi squared table and calculate a p value. And then we draw conclusions just like we always did p value is less than alpha, reject, otherwise fail to reject. And that's that. That's how you do uh, hypothesis testing with one variance. Uh, and I'll do some practice problems and pro post those. Um, but except for using a new table, uh, the skills that you've learned already for hypothesis testing will, will help you very much. So I'd say just stick with it and trust your gut. Um, and if you have any questions, shoot me an email, jjdelaney at ualr.edu, or uh, post a comment, um, and I'll be in touch soon. Thanks, guys. Bye.